Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Boeing teases hypersonic airliner. Facebook abandons Aquila program. And first flight for Wingfoot 3. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's July 2nd and this is Airborne Unlimited. A hypersonic airliner concept was unveiled by Boeing at the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics in Atlanta. The passenger concept could have military or commercial applications. This is just one of several hypersonic vehicle concepts spanning a wide range of potential applications company engineers are studying. Engineers are working company-wide to develop enabling technology that will position the company for the time when customers and markets are ready to reap the benefits of hypersonic flight. We're excited about the potential of hypersonic technology to connect the world faster than ever before. Boeing is building upon a foundation of six decades of work designing, developing, and flying experimental hypersonic vehicles, which makes us the right company to lead the effort in bringing this technology to market in the future," said Kevin Bocut, Senior Technical Fellow and Chief Scientist of Hypersonics. Although Bocut can't speculate when hypersonic flight for global travel will be a reality, he says it's possible a hypersonic passenger vehicle could be airborne in 20 to 30 years. The concept, along with other visions of Boeing's future, will be on display at Farnborough Air Show in July. After the break, soaring competition set for AGN Michigan. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero newsnet With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Sandhill Soaring Club and Adrian Soaring Club have teamed up with the Soaring Society of America to host the 2018 U.S. Juniors Contest and Development Camp and concurrent Region 6 North Sports and Club Class Contest at Lenawee County Airport in Adrian, Michigan, July 1st through 7th. Region 6 and nearby Region 7 Chicagoland and Ontario-based pilots are invited to the event. Private jet operator Clay Lacey Aviation has opened a new office at Westchester County Airport in White Plains, New York. This office is an extension of the company's East Coast headquarters in Oxford, Connecticut, further enhancing service and support for aircraft management, jet charter, and maintenance clients in the New York area. The Flight School Association of North America says it's continuing to receive reports from flight training providers around the country that sourcing of practical tests have become a burden to their models of providing flight training to its completion. Flight School Association of North America has been working with FAA and industry partners for almost two years to determine how big of a problem that really is and to try to provide solutions. Unfortunately, the problem has gotten worse, not better. Authorities are still searching for the pilot of a Piper PA-12 that was landed on a secure Coast Guard beach in Cape May, New Jersey, Sunday. The pilot fled on foot after landing the aircraft on the beach. 
Barbara Tomalino, president of Paramount Air Services, which owns the plane, said it was used by one of our employees without permission. We didn't even realize it was gone. The company uses the plane to tow advertising banners in the region. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Facebook has abandoned its efforts to use a high-altitude solar-powered drone to relay internet connectivity to people living in remote areas without such service. Facebook began its efforts in 2014. The company said it developed an aircraft known as Aquila as well as other technologies to deliver wireless internet connectivity to remote areas. In 2016, one of its aircraft suffered a wing failure while attempting to land which the NTSB attributed to strong winds. The flight was the first for the full-scale test aircraft. The company continued its development and conducted additional successful test flight, but now is giving up on the effort and closing the plant in Bridgewater in the UK. Going forward, we'll continue to work with partners like Airbus on HAPS connectivity generally and on other technologies needed to make the system work like flight control computers and high-density batteries. On the policy front, we'll be working on a proposal for the 2019 World Radio Conference to get more spectrum for HAPS, and we'll be actively participating in a number of aviation advisory boards and rulemaking committees in the U.S. and internationally. After these messages, first flight of Wingfoot 3. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. Last Monday marked a milestone for Goodyear's newest blimp, Wingfoot 3, which departed from the Wingfoot Lake blimp base where it was built. The flight began at just before 0900 local time in ideal weather conditions. The maiden flight lasted about five hours. Most of the test flights will be conducted between the Blimp Base and Akron Canton Airport, according to Goodyear Chief Pilot Michael Dirty, who is on the flight test team. The airship is restricted by the FAA to a specific flight authorization area for the test program, he said. Wingfoot 3 was taken out of its hangar for the first time on June 21st for pre-flight testing, but wind and rain pushed the initial flight to Monday. The airship, which still belongs to Zeppelin, the company that built it for Goodyear, is the last of three new technology airships built by the company for Goodyear. It will be handed over to Goodyear at the end of the flight test program, which is expected to last several weeks. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.